of Tiffany. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about an analysis that I conducted in collaboration with a uh, research scientist at Cal EPA, OEHA. And we explored the uh, relationship between high temperature <laughs> and risk of uh, stillbirth in California using a cohort data from 1999 to 2009. And uh, uh, our findings were accepted for publication in the American Journal of Epidemiology recently. So, uh, rising temperature threatens our health and well-being. But this will not be affecting all of us equally. There will be especially vulnerable population that may include pregnant women and their growing fetuses. So, uh, previous studies have linked uh, temperature and seasonality to many of the adverse birth outcomes in studies conducted worldwide. But less is known about the relationship between uh, temperature and stillbirth. In fact, there are only two previous studies conducted, both outside the US, analyze the relationship between uh, temperature and stillbirth. Okay, before I go to the details of my uh, analysis, let me give you some facts about stillbirth. So, stillbirth is also known as fetal death, and the definition of stillbirth varies depending on the location. And in California, it is defined as the death of a fetus who's advanced to at least 20 weeks of gestation. Uh, prior to the complete expulsion from its mother. Uh, even though uh, the number of stillbirth is decreasing, as of 2013 in the US, uh, stillbirth affects around one percentage of all pregnancies. That means around uh, 25,000 stillbirths per year. Known causes of stillbirth include obstetric condition, placental umbilical cord abnormalities, fetal genetic structural abnormalities, infection, and hypertensive disorders. And study shows that environmental factors such as temperature or air pollution could accelerate these causes and leading to more stillbirth. Okay, now let me focus on our study. Our study objectives are listed here. First, we wanted to explore the association between apparent temperature and stillbirth in California during the warm seasons of 1999 to 2009. Second, we wanted to determine if a particular maternal demographic factors, fetal sex, or gestational weeks shows more sensitivity to apparent temperature. Third, we wanted to determine if effect estimates varied by core season of stillbirth or by distance to temperature monitor. Finally, we were also interested in exploring if there is a confounding effect by air pollutants. Okay, now let me explain our data. Uh, California Department of Public Health provided the stillbirth data and from the fetal death certificate we obtained information about sex of the fetus, gestational age of the fetus, date of stillbirth, maternal residential zip code, maternal factors such as age, education, race, ethnicity. And our study period of interest was the warm season between uh, 1999 to 2009 and we defined the warm season as the period between May to October. Here is a quick summary of our final study population. Our final study population included around 8,500 stillbirths and uh, most of the mothers were of Hispanic race and were between the age range 25 to 34. Uh, majority of the mothers were not educated beyond high school and majority of the uh, fetuses were male. Uh, meteorological data was uh, provided by the National Climatic Data Center, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, CA Irrigation Management Information System. And uh, using the uh, hourly measures of uh, temperature and humidity, we calculated the apparent temperature, which was our exposure of interest. And we limited our analysis to mothers living within the 10 kilometers of a temperature monitor. We did this to uh, avoid, uh, mitigate uh, exposure misclassification, also to increase the number of stillbirth included in the analysis. Uh, California Air Resources Board provided the air pollution data, and we considered four gaseous pollutants as the potential confounders, and they were nitrogen dioxide, ozone, sulfur dioxide, and carbon monoxide. And again, we limited our study to uh, mothers living within the air pollution monitor distance restriction as shown here. Here is a quick exposure metric summary during our study period. And the average apparent temperature uh, in the warm season was around 68 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, uh, we used a uh, time stratified case crossover method as our study design. So, case crossover, method, uh, case crossover method is ideal for short term exposure with acute relationship. And in this, 
Each person serves as their own controls and we will be comparing the exposure during the case day, that means the day of stillbirth, with that of uh, exposures in the control days to see if the cases are associated with a particular exposure. And here we limited uh, control periods to the same day of the week as that of the uh, cases to adjust for, for the day of the week. And we used a time stratified case crossover design and we restricted all control periods from within the same month as that of the stillbirth occurrence. And this will uh, help us to account for long term time, time trends and seasonality by limiting individual comparison to small time periods. So previous studies have uh, suggested that uh, fetal death uh, may take an average of 48 hours in the third trimester and around uh, 70 hours in the entire pregnancy to be completely expelled from its mother. So we considered uh, various lags uh, starting from uh, lag day 2 and we considered various single day lags as well as cumulative day lags. In single day lags, uh, lag x means uh, exposure x days prior to the stillbirth and we considered uh, single day lags 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and in cumulative day lags, lag 2x means it is the average of several lag periods starting from lag, day, lag 2 to lag x days and we considered uh, cumulative day lags 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5 and 2, 6. We calculated the odds ratio and 95% uh, confidence interval but we are reporting the results as percentage change in stillbirth, uh, stillbirth risk but 10 degree Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit increase in the apparent temperature. Okay, here is a, a quick visualization of our study design. So depending on uh, when the stillbirth occurred in a month, uh, we could select the control periods uh, before and after the event. So uh, consider, uh, for example, consider uh, the column marked in blue color. So the stillbirth occurred in the middle of the month. So we had control periods both before and after the event. But uh, consider the column marked in uh, orange color. So there the stillbirth occurred at the end of the month. So all our control periods were selected before the event at the beginning of the month. And uh, two examples for the single day lags are also shown here. So for example, lag 2 means uh, for the orange uh, column, uh, it is the exposure two days prior to the cases or controls. And lag 3 means three days prior to the uh, events. <laughs> Uh, statistical analysis were conducted in two steps. In the first step, we used a conditional logistic regression and we calculated the effect estimates for each climate zone. Uh, there are uh, 16 climate zones in California as shown in the map and they were defined by the California Energy Commission based on weather, energy use or any other variables related to the climate. And in this map, uh, the color represents uh, average apparent temperature for uh, silver during our study period. Okay, now let me come back to statistical analysis. Uh, once we have the effect estimates for each climate zone, we calculated a, uh, we used meta-analysis to calculate a pooled estimate for California by combining all the climate zone level estimates. And here, we assumed a random effect model, which means uh, we assume that the true effect will vary from one climate zone to another. And we used both SAS and R in our analysis. Okay, now let me focus on our results. So in our analysis, we did not see a nonlinear relationship between apparent temperature and silver. So all our analysis, all our results are based on linear models. And uh, here are the uh, meta-analysis uh, result uh, <coughs> for the uh, warm season for all the single and cumulative day lag periods we considered. And uh, per 10 degree Fahrenheit increase in the mean apparent temperature, uh, we observed an increase in silver risk for all the lag periods we considered. And the highest uh, risk was observed for the uh, cumulative day lag 2 sex. Um, and uh, for cumulative day lag 2 sex, we observed around 10.4% uh, increase in silver per 10 degree Fahrenheit increase in the mean apparent temperature. Also, uh, we found that uh, models with uh, uh, cumulative day lag to lag to six was the best fitting model, and hence in the subsequent slides I will be showing the results from that lag only. So uh, we found uh, some variability in the risk of stillbirth by various uh, maternal factors and fetal sex. Uh, even though uh, the uh, 
risk of stillbirth was similar for majority of the uh, maternal race ethnic group, uh, ranging from uh, 9.4 to 10.8. We observed the uh, lowest risk in stillbirth for non-Hispanic Asian mothers, while the significant uh, risk was observed for the Hispanic mothers. Uh, lowest, uh, sorry, elevated risk were observed for uh, youngest, uh, younger mothers who were uh, less than 25 years of age in comparison with uh, those mothers who are between 25 to 34 years and who were greater than 34 years of age. Uh, mothers who were uh, less educated had a higher risk of stillbirth in comparison with those who had some college education. Uh, also, male fetuses shown uh, higher risk in comparison with uh, female fetuses. We also checked effect modification by uh, gestational uh, weeks. Uh, even though the uh, risk uh, was similar for uh, preterm period, the first, uh, first one, uh, income and uh, full term period, we observed the significant uh, results in the preterm period. We also found uh, elevated risk of stillbirth uh, during the gestational week between 20 to 25 as well as between 31 to 33 weeks. Okay. <coughs> Listed are the summary of our analysis. Uh, we found uh, that apparent temperature is associated with stillbirth in California. We observed uh, greater risk for younger, less educated mothers and male fetuses. We observed lower risk of stillbirth for non-Hispanic Asian mothers. Uh, higher risk for pregnancies were observed uh, between 20 to 25 and 31 to 33 gestational weeks. Um, and we also found association where more pronounced for mothers who lived within uh, 10 kilometers of a temperature monitor, but we did not see a statistically significant association in the core season. We did not see a uh, non-linear relationship between <coughs> temperature and stillbirth. Also, temperature effects were independent of air pollutants. So here are, here are our conclusions. We were able to establish the fact that pregnant women and their growing fetuses are vulnerable populations to heat. And uh, studying the relationship between apparent temperature and stillbirth is relatively a new topic. In fact, ours is the first large epidemiological study conducted anywhere in the US. And based on our conclusions, further studies in other locations are warranted. Also, database with more information on maternal risk factors and medical condition would be beneficial. I would like to thank my co-authors, Dr. Lupa Basu and Brian Malik from CalPA Oliha, and thank you. <coughs> biological mechanisms postulated, so, uh, but uh, some of them may be a long term effect, but the uh, short term effects may include uh, excessive, uh, I mean, maternal heat stress can lead to more stillbirths via excessive premature labor and insufficient fetal nutrition. So in excessive premature labor can happen due to dehydration, dehydration leading to reduction uterine blood flow, thus leading to more premature labor. Also, uh, heat, uh, excess heat can uh, lead to the damage of cells, placenta and vascular system, thus leading to the uh, fetal nutrition. Could you, could you talk about it in the context of your findings that lower SCS populations are at higher risk? It sounded like you were saying that lower resource populations might be at higher risk. Yeah, so uh, previous uh, studies have uh, shown a disparity in uh, adverse birth outcome uh, with uh, race and ethnicity. And they observed uh, this. This is affecting mainly Hispanic and uh, African Americans. So, and they linked uh, in I mean, lack of prenatal care and insufficient fetal nutrition to adverse birth outcome. So, I think it may be related. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about where the temperature monitors are located? You said the risk was increased within 10 kilometers, or where the monitor was placed. Uh, so we uh, we assign the exposure based on residential zip code. We don't have the uh, exact address. Okay. So uh, yes. So the, maybe they're not understanding the temperature monitor placement within ten kilometers. So uh, from the tempera uh, temperature monitor, we calculate <coughs> ten kilometers radius. Yeah. Radius. Yeah. And where? How do you place the the monitor? Like how, where is that place? It will be the middle of the 10 kilometers. Um, so
so we have references in the literature about preterm delivery being uh, also associated with this and other outcomes. So does this suggest that those are conservative estimates since those studies did not include fetal death or consider fetal deaths in the process? Yes. <laughs> Was that a recommendation of your paper? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we didn't have information about uh, maternal occupation actually, so we thought maybe education or uh, education may be acting as a proxy for. Okay, so I see that now is there in Asia they have lowest risk uh -huh. compared to other races. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because I think most Asian would like to stay home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe in our uh, data set we had a uh, majority of Hispanic women uh, and uh, maybe most of them, I mean, so we have the central California and that include lots of Hispanic women and they may be mainly immigrant workers working outside, so occupation may be playing a role here. Yeah. But I think she's asking if people with a temperature be different where people work versus where they live? Yes, yeah, so, uh, so we, don't, we didn't have, uh, I mean, uh, personal uh, information. I mean, we don't know the uh, how. We, so we measured the ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have the information about how a single person actually uh, experienced the temperature. We didn't have it, that information. Another question: um, Was there any effect modification with climate zone? <coughs> I, I can't remember exactly how you handled uh, that here. So. Uh, no, we didn't check that. So we produced the combined effect, not the individual climate zone levels. We didn't check that. Can you put just the graph back up for a moment? Nope, keep going back. That one. Nope, yeah. The lag day. The lag day. So I, I'm just I'm trying to understand. Um, so the first uh, five data points on the graph, uh -huh. lag days two, three, four, five, and six, we were seeing a little bit of a dose response in that yes. if you had the exposure two days prior, the percent change is higher, and then it kind of, if we ignore day three, it kind yeah. of steadily decreases. Uh -huh. um, so then. Day, lag days, you know, cumulative days two and three, two, mm -hmm. three and four, two, three, four and five, oh, yeah, and two, three, four, five, six. So that's just showing the, the cumulative, yeah. and that's why I, it, it increases. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, it just it's just confusing. a little bit confusing. Uh, Has it, yeah. Yeah, we don't know the exact biological mechanism for those. We don't know that. So, uh, temperature monitor will be located. I mean, I don't know that information. Whether it is, I don't know that. Yeah. Are they EPA placed or are these temperature monitors? Uh, I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't know how they are distributed. Sorry? What is temperature range for this 10 Fahrenheit increase? Like you, uh, you can go back to the graph. It says per 10 yeah. degree increase. So what is the range for this temperature? <coughs> like this is an average risk for per? Yeah, so the temperature ranges, uh, I mean, the lowest was uh, 52 Fahrenheit to higher range was 85 degree Fahrenheit. 
I'm wondering is there a hierarchical difference between every 10 percent, whether using average or not, to be buyers. Uh, like for 10, incre 10 degree increase from 52 to 62, would be very different from 62 to 72, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm wondering whether you can do this, like uh, at analysis for mm -hmm. different Yes, you can do, yes. You can predict, uh, I mean, for 10 degree Fahrenheit or you can predict for 15 degree Fahrenheit from our, based on our results, yes. Okay, and uh, could you go back to the slides with the age, for the different rates for different age groups, no. the graph? Um, I guess it's another one, the other one, age groups, like from uh, 20 to... Oh, the weeks. Yeah, weeks. This one? Uh, oh, the graph. Okay, the graph. graph. So, uh, so, uh, so there was uh, some previous studies uh, that that was mainly for uh, preterm birth, and they found that uh, oxidative stress uh, could lead to the premature aging of placenta, and that may lead to the uh, uh, I mean excessive premature labor. So I think the same mechanism, uh, oxidative stress may be happening due to temperature also, and that may be lead. Uh, so at 33 weeks. Uh, placenta may, I mean, the 33 week old placenta may be uh, act like a 40 old placenta and that may be leading to uh, a premature labor and thus leading to uh, more stillbirth. Oxidative stress may be a reason. That's what we possibly, we don't know the exact reason. Wouldn't that be infant death? I Sorry? mean, if a premature labor, uh -huh. that wouldn't be a stillbirth. That would be a premature no, but premature labor can, uh, that was one of the biological mechanisms. Sure, sure. I'm just saying that then that would be a live born infant that dies. Correct. That's just the difference. That's not captured by your outcome of stillbirth. No, but uh, excessive premature labor could lead to more stillbirth. That was one of the biological mechanisms. But the infant would have to die in utero and then be delivered. If they're delivered and die, it's not stillbirth. That's all I'm saying. To be clear about. What yes, but all, uh, what I'm saying is oxidative stress may be one of the reason. Yeah, I understand. I'm just saying when you're saying that could be a mechanism. That's a mechanism of infant mortality, not a mechanism of stillbirth. Uh, if, if, if there's early labor, that's so early that it causes yeah, death. Yes, uh, so what I was saying, in the paper earlier, they were presenting it for the premature, and we are seeing oxidative stress may be one of the reasons for stillbirth as well. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, low risk for 34 to 36, yes. small sample size? Or? Yes, we had a small sample size, so we don't know the reason. Thank you very much.